Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacy and the boys with me. Hey, hey y'all. And in today's video, we're going to be looking in the Shepherd of Hermas, the second book of the Shepherd of Hermas called Commands and Command 2, that we must avoid detraction and do our own deeds with simplicity. Right. So it's actually two parts to this class. Right. The first one, again, is on avoiding detraction. Which means lying, right? Um, slander. Mm -hmm. um, defamation. Gonna, defamation of character. We're going to find out how destructive that is, you know, and why we should avoid it. Not only not do it, but if somebody else does it around us, we need to flee as if we're know, doing it. it yeah, sense. as if we could be caught up in it because mm -hmm. we're going to learn here that that's exactly the case. Right. And then once we finish the verses that talk about that, then it's going to switch gears and it's going to start talking about alms deeds and how we should treat our alms giving with simplicity. Right. Right. All right. So we'll learn what the, all of that means. And you guys watching, if you would go ahead and hit that like button, make sure you're subscribed and prepare to leave a comment along the way. You want to go ahead and read verse one? He said unto me, be innocent and without disguise. So shall thou be like an infant who knows no malice, which destroys the life of a man. So it's talking about maliciousness. Right. And he's saying that we should be like infants. You right. Know, infants don't run around too often detracting from other people. They don't know such things. In fact, we all have to be taught. Mm -hmm. To be malicious or to um, have sort of like an evil eye toward another person. Right. And that's really what's going on here. Matt, you want to go on to verse 2? Especially see that thou speak evil of none, nor willingly hear anyone speak evil of others. So this would be detraction mm -hmm. or slander. Yeah. It's saying not only do we not do it, but if somebody shows up, to do such things with us, you know, our friends want to come in and gossip or whatever. We have to avoid that too. Right. Yeah. It says willingly hear anyone speak evil of other. You know, sometimes you can be put in a position where you say, for instance, you're at a conference mm -hmm. and or at work and you at a meeting and they start talking uh, bad about somebody. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just can't get up and get leave. up and leave. But um, so what do you do? What is it suggesting that we do? This? Well, you don't willingly listen. Right. You know, now may be the time to zone out, mm -hmm. start doing your own thing. Of course, if you if you're in a type of a meeting, of course, it's not official business. Mm -hmm. So it may be a good time to get up and take, take a, a bathroom, bathroom break. break. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because what happens then? OK, let's say you're in this meeting and somebody has stepped out of the room. And so now that this person is gone, we're going to talk about them behind their back. Mm. I don't really know who I don't know who the person is. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some co-worker from the finance department. I don't even know where that's at. Mm -hmm. But now we're in this meeting and we're talking about this person, how she's doing this and how she's doing that. And she's got this going on and she didn't did this. Right. So what happens when she walks back into the room? Yeah. I have these feelings against her, even though I don't know her, even though I didn't witness her do it. I still am feeling a certain way mm -hmm. because I sat there willingly and listened to it. Right. So a lot of times I'll find myself around people, not necessarily in a meeting, but maybe a one on one or a small group conversation. And this will happen. Mm -hmm. And things I do is try to change the subject. Yeah, you're good at that. I'll try to bring out good things about the person. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But didn't they give you a ride the other day kind of thing <laughs> um, or something to let those people know? that I'm not really going to participate in a slander against that other person. Right. And it don't take long. They usually get it. Mm. They want you to participate. And when they realize that you're not, they you know, find something else that you might participate. Yeah. In. And they'll go find somebody else to talk with. I've had it uh, where it was presented to me where, you know, you, you make this pledge to yourself and say, well, I'm not going to talk about people anymore. Or I'm not going to be, uh, in in a conversation where there's gossip and you've had the other person say, oh, you don't talk about people no more. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I'm trying not to. <laughs> yeah, he trying to so, bring yeah. you back in it. Yeah. All right, verse 3. For if thou observest not this, thou also who heareth shall be partaker of the sin of him that speaketh evil by believing the slander. 
and thou also shall have sin, because thou believest him that spoke evil of thy brother. So you're committing a sin too. Mm -hmm. You're break. You're transgressing too. Yeah. You're going. Bad things are going to happen to you too, simply by listening to somebody else. Yeah, I think a lot of us don't know that. That yeah. you know, even though we don't say nothing, we say, "Well, I didn't talk about you, but you sat there and willingly listened." Listen to it and believing. Notice that part. By believing the slander, that's key too, because you can hear the slander and not believe it. Mm -hmm. You know, you somebody say, it, you, like you say, you you caught off guard in a situation, and they just blurt out a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't necessarily have to fall for it. You mm -hmm. can understand that this is just slander, and you can just blow it off as such. Yeah, for instance, like you're riding in a car with somebody, and they see you know see somebody walk across the street, they're like, you know, he smoked crack. People are like, yeah. what? Yeah. Where did that come from? Uh, and then, and but, so now you're thinking about that. Yeah, and you have to block <laughs> it out. I don't know that. No, I don't know that. I don't know that at all. I have no idea. And even after this conversation, <laughs> I still don't. Matter of fact, what's crack? I don't know. You know, because you don't want to engage. Because what happens when that person shows up at your house? Yeah, you got this look about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you don't want to trust them. You right. want you know, and you don't know if that's true or not. Right. Somebody else blurted that out, and now you're acting on it, even treating this person a certain kind of way because of it. Yeah, sometimes they're just mad at the person, or you know, and they got bad things to say about them, and it could not even be true. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Have something against them, and they're trying to make you have something against them too. And as we see here, it will work. It will work. You will start to believe it. And shall take part in it. Hmm. Verse 4. Detraction is a pernicious thing, an inconstant evil spirit that never continues in peace, but is always in discord. Wherefore, refrain thyself from it and keep peace evermore with thy brother. Now, this is a very important verse because it's telling us how bad this is. It's not just a bad thing. It's telling us that this is an evil spirit. Detraction is a spirit. Mm -hmm. And so the way it works is detraction comes in, gives us the urge to go detract from somebody. Mm -hmm. But then once this happens and we fall for it and we go and slander somebody, then comes this other stuff. We're not allowed to continue in peace. Mm -hmm. Even when we're not around the person, this spirit is going to bring argument into our houses. We was down talking about somebody in town at the street corner mm -hmm. and we didn't came all the way back to the country where we live and we brought all of that back with us and so now inside of this house we're going to be arguing amongst ourselves not even knowing why yeah because it's a spirit right and we bring the spirit in by detracting that's mm -hmm. why we don't want to do this right you know it says it never continues in peace yeah, yeah. so it's, it's not possible right you know, and so that's why you wonder why things are going wrong with you over here, not realizing that we committed this act over here. And so that's why we're doing this study, because like you said, not many people know this, right. that this is actually going on. We're wondering what's going on in our homes, not realizing that it's outside of our homes that we're getting these and bringing them back to our houses. Right. First of all, put on an holy constancy in which there are no sins. But all is full of joy and do good of thy labors. Yeah, so never never detract from another. You don't want to hear it. You know, we all got our own faults anyway. Right. You know, and you know, what do they always say? The person going to come and talk to you about somebody else. And then they're going <laughs> to leave ahead. you. And then they're going to talk about you. Right. <laughs> so you don't want to participate in that at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. All right. But now it's going to change gears a little bit. And then it's going to start talking about giving. So anybody got anything else to talk about detraction or slander or anything anybody want to add before we move on to the next part of this chapter this video this class i think one of the most important things um that we can learn from that is that just listening yeah a lot of times like we said people think that it's just the actual talking about the person mm -hmm. but listening is seems to be just the same as talking about them and then think about a television Mm, mm -hmm. Where you know they could Ooh, be on there, yeah, the, uh, uh, mm -hmm. campaigns mm -hmm. where they're slant, they're where they're slandering each of throwing mud at each of the uh, their opponents, their political mm -hmm. opponents. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think about it like that because you know it, it'd be funny, but you're bringing those evil spirits up on you just by listening to it. Yeah, and then what happens when the person becomes president? Now you got all of that in your mind that you got to deal with half of it being not true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so let's go on to verse six, talking about alms, deeds, and giving. Verse six, give without distinction to all that are in want, not doubting to whom thou givest. Now you remember up there it says it's gonna talk about alms, deeds, and simplicity. Mm -hmm. And that's what it means right here, not doubting to whom thou shalt give. See, the complicated alms giver got to decide who's gonna get what. They gotta See make who needs it the most. Yeah, who deserves it? Who's supposed to get it at all? They will make judgments on a person. You walk down the street, going to your favorite restaurant, and all of a sudden somebody asks you for some loose change. Mm -hmm. Well, if you are simple, it doesn't matter. You don't even have to look at them. It's like oh, start patting your pockets. But if you're not simple, if you're the complicated giver, now start you gotta looking at their shoes like yeah, you gotta so analyze. Shoes you got on, <laughs> yeah, man. and what you gonna do with this yeah. money? And mm -hmm. why don't you have a job? And all of this kind of stuff starts coming in to make you not actually give the person what they're asking for, and that's that's not right. Right. Because we've always we've, we've all been in situations where, where we need it, where we need it, mm -hmm. and we may not have needed yesterday or last week. And we probably won't need tomorrow or next week, but we need it today, mm -hmm. right? And so if you're looking at how I dress or, you know, what, what's going on, you may not help me in this moment. And let me go on because you're a complicated giver. Mm -hmm. He's saying to be simple and to give without doubting as to who it is you're giving it to. No distinction. If they ask, you give it. Right. Verse 7. But give to all, for God will have us give to all of all his own gifts. They therefore that receive shall give an account to God, both wherefore they receive and for what end. Yeah, see when we give, we get back what we have given multiplied. Mm -hmm. And it, what he's saying here is it doesn't matter who it is we give it to. So what if the person is taking advantage of us? That's fine because I'm going to get what I gave him back multiplied. Right. Right. He, he asked me for a dollar and he has two dollars in his pocket. Okay, well, fine. I'm going to give him my dollar. Now he has three. Chances are he needed three. Mm -hmm. That's key. He wasn't being greedy. But what if he was? It's not my fault. It's his. Right. If he was just collecting money and realized I was the person that was going to give it to him, mm -hmm. he's the one later on going to have to answer for that. Right. It's none of my business because I've already gotten the reward for having done the alms deed. So I really have nothing to do with what happens next. Mm -hmm. I gave him my one dollar and then I got back four. Mm -hmm. He's standing over there with the three, including that one dollar I gave him. I'm not concerned anymore. It's, it's not my business. But now since he did it under false pretenses, He's actually got to pay, and he probably will end up losing what he already had. Right. Mm -hmm. So you don't worry about it. We let our Father handle it. We just stay simple and give to whoever asks us or is in need, if, even if they don't ask. And we can tell we take the opportunity to give. Right. All right. We praise our Father in heaven. Hallowed be his name for the rain. But let's go ahead. Verse 8. And they that receive without real need shall give an account for it. But he that gives shall be innocent. Yeah. And the thing about it, it, it could have went further and says he that doesn't give will be guilty. Right? Mm -hmm. We just learned that. Mm -hmm. So you have to. Right. You cannot withhold. You have to give your alms. And you have to do your alms deeds. Um, but the trick is to be innocent about it and not worry about who it is you're giving to. Right. Because, like it says, the person who is receiving that doesn't really need it, they're the ones that will have to pay for. For he has fulfilled his duty as he received it from God, not making any choice to whom he should give and to whom not. And this service he did with simplicity and to the glory of God. Yeah. So this, the being simple part is key here. We're told all over the scripture that we have to give. Mm -hmm. That's understood that we have to give. It's important to give our alms deeds, like what we would read over there in Malachi, um, the book of Malachi chapter 3 and chapter 4. Particularly chapter 3 where it talks about whether we will rob God mm -hmm. and then you know it says wherefore have we robbed God it says through our alms and charity mm -hmm. so you can imagine how many people are out thinking because we thought at one time why are we giving the money to these people why are we giving the money to these people because it's none of our business what they actually do with it yeah yeah and we're just making judgments based on our own opinion right. yeah that reminds me of like 
like when we go into the city and we see the person standing by the intersection that you know the most crowded intersection and that person always has that bucket mm -hmm. and you know like why is this person always here and if they're doing it every day we're sitting there making it complicated by thinking of all these mm -hmm. reasons why we shouldn't give them mm -hmm. they probably got more than i got and this is their job and so and so and so but here we're being told that we're not even supposed to do that we're just supposed to give and the father will take care of that yeah and it should be noted that this will cause a spirit on you too a spirit of selfishness kind of mm -hmm. and it will cause disturbances in your house as well you know what this stuff is a lot it's complicated only because they haven't taught us this over years we were supposed to already know this kind of stuff with books like Dad the Seer and the Testament of Solomon and the Shepherd of Hermes and Barnabas and all of these books that were taken out we were supposed to already have this information knowing that if somebody asks us for something and we deny them we will cause trouble within our own household. Just that easy. We have to give. Right, right. And the Father tells us plainly, you know, you was talking about how he'll give it back to us. In Scripture, it tells us to give and I give back to you. Christ now, you know, shaking, shaking the dead. Yeah, mm -hmm. so um, will our cup run it over? So he's going to give us more if we just not make it complicated. Just do what he tells us to do and just give. Right, and he will give us more to give with. Yeah. Because right? you saw out there, he says, giving of that which belongs to our Father. Yeah, I used to be a selfish person. I mean, I think I was actually just raised that way, you know, of of not very, not having that much. And then somebody asks you for what you got, your first answer is no, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, you did. T you taught me a lot about just giving it and not questioning it, mm -hmm. questioning it. Um, allowing the father to give it back to you and not constantly be in doubt as to what they're going to do with it, why they need it, why I got to give them mine, and all of this stuff, just making it making it really complicated. Yeah, and the thing about it, we don't know about all this other stuff that he's helping us with. Mm -hmm. Like our tire could go flat on the car, you know, somebody asks us for $10, we say no. Well, we could be at the tire repair shop paying a hundred dollars for a new tire by the end of the mm -hmm. day and i believe that's how it works mm -hmm. the charity and the giving is actually preventing us from having our own troubles yeah in the, in the church they would say you got a hole in your pocket got a hole in it. Mm -hmm. and and but you got to think about the world system is how it is set up mm -hmm. because they teach that every man should have his own blessed is how it has his mm -hmm. own so that's why they have stuff like insurance Okay. So when their car get destroyed, right. they can get it repaired, you know, because that's where what our alms and our charity is doing is preventing the destroyer. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. since we're not a giving society as we, you know, once were and once will be, we have to have things like insurance just for when the destroyer shows up, we can replace that which he's destroyed. Right. Verse 10. Keep therefore this command according as I have delivered it into thee, that thy repentance may be found to be sincere, and that good may come to thy house and have a clear heart. Now, where is he putting his word repentance? We ain't talked about that in this video. It's the first, I mean, in this chapter, this is the first time he's mentioning it here. Right. So does it imply that there's a connection between our repentance and his charity? I believe so. Because we always talk about how you have to do your merits. Even once you repent of a crime, you still have to do your payback. Right. And you can pay it back through pain or you can pay it back through merits, doing good deeds. Right. So I believe that's why he mentions it here, saying that this is a part of the repentant process. This is the angel of repentance who is talking to the Hermes. Mm -hmm. And you know, so apparently this almsgiving is necessary for our repentance. Right. So that it can be found sincere, otherwise it's not really a sincere thing. And it says that good may come to the house. That, that reminds me of when they had to make sacrifices for sin. You know, they would have a sin offering. Mm -hmm. You know, and people got to eat that food. Right. You know, I would have to take my sin offering down to the priest, but the priest and his whole family got to enjoy that food. Right. Right. So that was an offering, and I got my repentance right. for the mm -hmm. sin that I committed. Mm -hmm. um, just going back to. 
the charity with your repentance, everything else, well, most of the other things when it comes to repentance, they're all just saying things or deciding things. I'm going to change. This mm -hmm. is the last time Word. it's going to happen. Yeah. But then charity, that's actually an outward action. Yeah. Yeah. Actually got to do something that right. hurts. Right. Got to give something that, that, that um, gives something of value. Yeah, that you otherwise wanted or thought you needed, like you know, money or, or, or an animal, whatever. So, you, yeah. so, yeah, that's a great insight that came out of this class. I hope you guys got something out of it as well. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. Again, make sure you subscribe, leave us a comment, um, share your opinion and what you think or any insights you can add, and I'll see you in the comment section. Shalom. Shalom.